Really nice looking fish. Wow, that's a trophy. That's a hog! Woo! Nice job, you two. There we go. Lund Boats proudly presents the ultimate fishing experience. This week on Lund's The Ultimate Fishing Experience, we're flying north to Jackson's Lodge on Harrop Lake in Manitoba, where we'll tag along with Lund's Special Events Coordinator, Ryan Spruill and Jason Goche on one of their many flyouts they've traveled together. Just drifting over a pocket, this pocket fish right now. Right now? Yeah. <laughs> Let me tighten my glasses and get things going, because it's, it's about to happen. I'm about to start it off. All right. Packing for a fly-in adventure can be an adventure all in itself. With limited space available, choosing the must-haves on a walleye excursion to the far north is topic number one on Ryan's and Jason's to-do list. Rods, reels, line, tackle, and electronics, all things necessary for a successful walleye outing. What a beautiful day, like I just love this. So it's time to pack those bags for a Canadian wilderness experience. But pack wisely, because there's no quick jaunt to the local tackle shop this far out. There he is. You got one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Ryan, here we are at uh, Harrop Lake Lodge, one of uh, Jackson's many uh, lodges and outposts, and uh, pretty excited about it. This morning, we're in Lac de Bonnet, Manitoba, and we flew in 160 miles north of Lac de Bonnet uh, on the Caravan Amphibian which is kind of cool because we took off on a, on a runway on wheels and we land here on the lake on the, sure. on the, on the floats. That was kind of cool. I mean, it's, what a beautiful ride. Very scenic, lots of cool stuff to see. And uh, we'll hopefully catch some fish. What do you think we're gonna go for today? You know what, uh, this is a multi-species lake. There's obviously a lot of pike and uh, walleyes on here, but you know, just looking at the map here, there's, there's so many different areas where we can fish here between there's, uh, I've seen a lot of rock spines, a lot of islands. Um, I, I don't think it's gonna be hard to find them. I think it's just a matter of getting out there and let's uh, throw some baits at them. Cool, right on. And you know, it also we got a good group of guys in here from the states here, and uh, hopefully even sit down with them a little bit and share some stories and uh, have a good have a good week. We're here for a few days, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well, let's get out there. We'll catch some fish. All right, let's go. What a beautiful day! Like I just love this. Yeah, this one's off bottom. I like when they're like that. That looks. That means that, to me, those are ones. Those are ones are gonna bite. Hey, okay. oh, 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 look at that! Right in a pot of bait fish. Oh, here we go. There we go. Anyway, there you go. Ah, oh, that's all right. That's a good one. Can we keep her in gear for you? Yeah, keep it going, buddy. Okay. We'll wheel this one in. No, oh, I think I got a bike going here too. All right. Awesome. Nice little Canadian shield walleye. Well, you know what? That one's not a trophy, but uh, we'll call this one an eater. Here's one. I got one too. All right, double header. So that's kind of cool, we're on a new lake. Not really sure where to start. And uh, best thing for me, what I do is I just drop down a bottom bouncer and troll around rock piles and reefs. And this one actually feels pretty good, Jay. Yeah. Want me to add him, buddy? There we go, yeah, that's all right. It's gonna be a low 20, maybe. I'll just flip it in. Wheel him in. Oh, that's a good one, bud. All right. Normally we'd net that, but uh, the net guy was a little off the, off of his game. Beauty, buddy. Yep. So yeah, I don't know. We're probably sitting around 19 inches slot size, and this lake is 18, so this would be a thrower backer. But yeah. Um, yeah, for pulling, you know, slow death on some rock piles here, I think this is probably an easy way to start, to start locating fish to start the day. So right on, buddy. Yeah. Great start, double header. Good job, buddy. 
So basically all we're doing right here is we're, uh, we're trolling between two islands here. We've got a little bit of water flushing through and uh, we're in, uh, you know, for the most part, eight to 12 feet. Uh, so all we're using is a one ounce balancer. Uh, when the wind's picking up, we're going to about one and a half and just using a real simple spinner rig, uh, just a single hook, pulling a crawler. I uh, got a UV color on the blade, some chartreuse uh, beads, and um, honestly, we're just uh, going back into the wind and it seems like it's, um, it's producing a couple of fish so far. Uh, we, earlier, we did some slow death, which put out some fish as well. So I'm not particularly sure if there's a difference between the slow death or running a single, you know, single crawler harness, but uh, that's what we've been using so far. Right on. Drop the line down, there he was. I'm just gonna keep in gear here, cause. Yeah, uh, good one. That's a little better, right yeah. on. Looks great, buddy. Nobody ever asked me where I catch them, I see right here. So we're fishing those um, the boulders right in the middle and it slowed down after, we got three quick ones there and it slowed down and tapered off a bit. So we ended up sliding off just between, um, the neck down between two islands and that was what, about 30 seconds and 30 seconds in. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know what, if you're gonna be doing a shore lunch, this is the perfect size and I mean, people always say that, but it really is. And I'm fishing where we're fishing up in Lake Winnipeg and we get those greenbacks, you know, we get some keepers for those to eat. These are way more solid. Tough to bait, eh? Beautiful day like this. Northern Manitoba Canadian Shield, boreal forest. It's a great day. From newbie to pro, no other lure category consistently catches bass better than a soft plastic lure, and there's hardly a better way to present a plastic than the Neko rig. In simple terms, a Neko rig is a nail-weighted plastic hooked somewhere in the midsection. Unlike a horizontal wacky rig, it's fished vertically and usually on bottom. Neko rigging crawfish plastics is a deadly way to catch bass. It's a phenomenal crawfish imitator. Bass hold on to it and produces excellent hookup ratios. Target bass along grass lines or grass hard bottom transition zones. Side imaging is the best tool to find these loaded up sweet spots. I spot lock a casting distance off the spot with my Minn Kota Ultrax trolling motor and make repeated casts to the same area without worrying about bulk control or spooking fish. Spinning gear with a braid mainline and fluorocarbon leader presents the bait naturally while providing excellent bite detection and hook setting power. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. So when you're going on one of these fly-out camps, if you want to make sure that you pack accordingly, you want to pack light. So the things you're going to need for a walleye trip basically is to start off if you want to go aggressive and you want to start cranking, you'll cover more ground because you can go at a little bit faster speed. Make sure you bring uh, different size bills here so you either have a better uh, grasp on the depth where you're going for fish in either deeper water or shallower water. Then if you also, if you want to make sure you bring your bottom bouncers, which are good. Vary the weight sizes from one ounce to three ounces. You never know if you're gonna be fishing in the current system. If you're on one of the river uh, cabins, you can either pull a spinner or a slow death. Slow death always works good. Put a crawler on there. You can even use plastics on there if you want, but crawlers always work the best. And once you find them and you get on a spot, if you wanna kinda just hunker down a little bit, grab yourself a jig, either with a marabou, or you can get the plastics and do some snap jigging with plastics. And the plastics stay on really well. So, I mean, if you miss them, you always get another crack at it. And if you really want to just kind of take her easy and relax and enjoy a nice relaxing day in the boat, throw your anchor out. You find them in vertical jig with either a uh, crawler, one of the plastics, or my favorite, the walleye will always, always hit a jig in the middle. Yeah, and for rod and reel, you know, especially doing a fly out trip, um, like, the, like we're doing here, you, you gotta pack kind of light. So what, what I'm using here is um, you know, a real uh, s simple seven foot uh, bait casting rod, uh, light bait caster reel, this one's an ambassador, and it's uh, spooled up a 10 pound, um, 10 pound braid. And the nice thing about that is it's, um, this, this rod's actually light enough for me to pull a one ounce balancer. Uh, but I'm also looking at, um, right now, I think we, we, might, we might start pulling some cranks through here, and I can double this rod up and uh, use this as a cranking rod as well. So when we gotta pack light when we're flying out, this is a real simple setup that'll, um, that'll, you can actually use it for a couple different opportunities here between cranking and bottom bouncing. So as we're back trolling the spot here, you're, if you look behind me, there's, um, there's a lot of rocks, boulders on here. There, there's nothing really smooth about it. So as we're adjusting here and driving back, you're constantly either raising your bounce or sliding up and then dropping it back down in those pockets. And that's the biggest part right there is once you go get on top there, 
Once you get in that pocket, you drop in that ledge, that's where there's a lot of fish sitting in there. So it's, um, it's, it's not, you're not driving straight down on a smooth line and just dragging a bait here. You're, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of movement, a lot of, lot of uh, constant adjustments is I guess the best way to put it. And as, I, as we're saying that, I'm already having another bite coming up here right now again. I got one here too, guys. All right, double header, there we go. That looks all right. Yeah, a little bit of meat on this one. I'm just gonna leave this in gear, see if I can snag one too. Almost on there. Take it, take it, take it, buddy. There we go. Oh, ice fish. Oh, well, that's nice. We that this one, right? No, nope, we're good. I just popped this in neutral here, Jay. Yeah, it's fine. That's good. Nice little, little walleye. There, there we go. go. Good Canadian shield walleye. Colors are looking pretty good. Nice Northern Canadian Shield walleye. We'll let that one go back. There you go, buddy. So we're just talking about maybe switching up and uh, start cranking around these rocks, but we decided to do one more pass here with the spinners. And I'm you know, not a big fish, but uh, I don't know, I'd say probably about 16, 17 inches. And you marked them. Yeah, we marked them right off the bottom there. He was just, just off a little bit there. And as soon as we trolled over, we took it. Nice fish. I think we take maybe a faster approach. We might be able to maybe trigger a couple more bites. Sounds good, buddy. Can always do a little bit of cranking. I like the yep. smash when we get the old crank yeah. going. We're gonna do exactly what you said, Ryan, and make sure to let out enough line where it taps in the bottom. Kind of knocking on the knocking on the door. Ringing the bell. We'll call it ringing the bell. Somebody's knocking. So when you're making plans to do a flyout trip like this, uh, one real key thing that someone needs to pay attention to is bringing the proper electronics to. Uh, be, actually be prepared and actually mark fish. Um, I'm Right now I'm using a Lowrance Hook 7 and the advantages with this machine right now is I got the capabilities of having a GPS right on here. This is all completely portable. Uh, I've got a great sonar on it and as I'm trolling right now I'm, I've already marked a whole bunch of waypoints where we're marking fish when we're catching them so we're actually setting up a you know, almost like a little cookie trail right here where actually we're, we're gonna run the back and forth and catch these fish and as I say that I just caught one right here on it so so that's been working out really well. And the other thing too with this Hook 7, these portable units come with the suction cup uh, for the transducer. And that plays a big role too, because it literally took me about two seconds to come out here and just put the transducer on, uh, turn on the power, and then start fishing like this. So, Let's see what we got here. Looks like we've got another walleye coming up. That's called the surf and turf right there. So that was the kind of the cool thing, like I said, and as, as, I, as I caught this fish, I went right over that waypoint that I marked five minutes before. Uh, so yeah, these portable units, you know, as much as you, you got to plan and pack for these, these trips, uh, a Lowrance uh, portable unit does play a big role in your success for the day. I'm marking two off bottom here right now. That was cool that we saw him, marked him, and then he hit. Yeah. I got a feeling we're going to do okay here. So there's two right on the bottom of the ledge right here. Oh yeah. You got a good speed going right now, buddy. The other advantage when we're running these um, these portable Lowrance uh, Hook 7s here is um, I'm able to control my speed a whole lot easier. As you can see here, it's, we got a little bit of chop on the water. And when we're pulling our crankbaits, I always like to be trolling you know, anywhere from 1.8 to 2 miles an hour. And um, I can see that right here, that's what I got. I got a, I'm right in that sweet spot. It's a whole lot easier, it simplifies everything. I can focus on you know watching the graph, I can focus on you know what's coming up in front. So yeah, so just having the speed control with uh, these portable units makes a big difference for me. Well, that one actually feels pretty good, boys. I'm gonna keep that right. one. Pop that neutral I got one here, too, boys. Double header. Well, that was a nice little tap there, pulling the cranks. And just mentioning that it's good to get down to about nine feet, tickle the bottom a little bit, and sure enough, as soon as we got down low enough, just started tickling the rocks, and I could feel it, there was some gravel bottom, and sure enough, he pounded it. There we go. We'll wheel them in. There we go. So we're just making our last pass here, pulling some cranks. And uh, we're talking about going out and doing some snap jigging. But the uh, pretty cool thing is, is uh, it doesn't seem to matter what application we're doing right now, we're getting fish. So I'd actually like to do something as, as opposed to just uh, trolling and we'll just snap some jigs and see what we get out of that. What do you think, Jay? Absolutely, I love doing the snap jigging. So basically what we're doing right now is uh, when we're coming out these plyo camps, 
Um, I always try to pack really simple and light and we all have our essentials, but um, went for rods here, for a jigging rod, I have a six and a half foot medium light uh, open face uh, spinning reel uh, combo here and I'm able to, you know, snap some plastics. We're using a three inch um, walleye assassin paddle tail on a quarter ounce jig and we're just going to drag over here and see if we can pop up a fish or two. Um, or you can just, you know, run a regular, regular old jig head with, uh, you know, a salted minnow or a crawler on it. And they hit it hard. When they they smoke it, like they really do. We're gonna let them go. Just on that, just bouncing it off the bottom, and not big crazy bounces. I like to call it almost like a slow jig. I love this kind of fishing. This is so much fun, especially when you're on fish. That's nice when they hit the way you just feel it goes duck. Yeah, no, it's a different kind of bite, right? Oh, I just had the same go. bite. <laughs> There you go. I'll let that one go, Ryan, just so you can get that one. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. I'm there for you. When you get on a school of these and they're all over the place, it's fun. And we're, we're just drifting over a pocket, a pocket of fish right now. Right now? Yeah. Well, <laughs> let me tighten my glasses and get things going because it's, it's about to happen. This one just drilled it. Same thing, just same as Jay, just ticking the bottom, giving a couple of late bumps, and these fish are actually just turned, they're trucking them. Well, Ryan, you've been with Lund Boats now for how long? What, over 20 years? It's been 22 years with me with the Lund boats now. And my first job with the company was I was bucking rivets on assembly line, building the hulls of the boats. And I slowly worked my way up and with, within the company and uh, got myself into marketing now where I'm working with all the pro staff and the tournaments and, um, and with our dealers for that matter. Um, I worked my way up and down the assembly line from starting, starting to build the boats right to finishing. When you can actually take apart a boat and look in, in your mind, you can see that the boat right from the beginning of the skeleton to the finished product. It's a pretty cool feeling. That's, for me, that's what uh, gets me, you know, kind of charged up on Lund too, because it's not just being on the water, it's how do we get on the water. So. And once you're there, how do you make it better? You know what I mean? Yep. You're always looking for better ways to get things going. It's no, pretty absolutely, nice to see. yeah. And that's, that's the way, you know, Lund works on their innovation right now is, um, you know what, um, new, new ideas from IPS, IPS hulls to which the evolution of IPS2 and IPS3 hulls, uh, sport tracks, pro-rated live hulls. Um, and fit and finish and just uh, the enjoyability and the, the comfort on the water and you know something as simple as river, reverse chine uh, You know when we're sitting on this boat right here we got, we're, we're a couple of bigger dudes and we're not rocking in this boat um, That's the reverse chine. That's uh, that's the way we build our boats because we want to be as comfortable as possible when you're out fishing well, I'd be a lot more comfortable if you took us back to that rock right over the hot spot and let's even get ourselves a couple more walleyes mm -hmm. we can Let's do go that buddy. Too. That does look like a good one. Oh, yeah, this is actually one of the better ones so far today oh, Pike snake. not really all right, let's see. Well, there's Pike here. We know that for sure. Well, I think that's our clue right now that um, we fished a spot, spot for a while. It's starting to slow down a bit, but uh, let's go. Um, let's go check out maybe the falls. I know there's uh, some little currents, or some little river streams in there. You know what? Let's go for a ride and check it out. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll even see a moose like that. All right, let's move on then, buddy. Well, I think that's our clue right now that uh, we fished a spot, spot for a while. It's starting to slow down a bit, but uh, let's go um, let's go check out maybe the falls. I know there's uh, some little currents or some little river streams in there. You know what? Let's go for a ride and check it out. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll even see a moose like that. All right, let's move on then, buddy. Hey, Ryan, how awesome is this? We're here at Jackson's Lodge at Outpost, Northern Manitoba, Harrop Lake Lodge. And how awesome was this? We're fishing in an SSV-16 drop-in floor. We spent all day in the water today and walking on a nice floor like this. Two big guys to handle sure. like champs. We caught lots of walleyes. Great stuff to have all these uh, boats out here in northern Manitoba. Lund's doing a great job. So yeah, fishing on Harrop Lake. Here, um, you know, we have um, it's a smaller lake, and we're fishing on the SSV 16. It's got an IPS hull. Uh, it's a nice running platform for us, and um, it's got the drop-in floors, which is an option. But then, um, you know, we spend a lot of time talking to all our other camps, and uh, you know, there's uh, we got a lot of bigger lakes out there where we have the Alaskans, the 1750 outfitters, and when we start getting to those models, uh, then you're getting into boats with full floors, live wells, sport track gunnels, and all the amenities that you see on your on your regular day fishing boat. But you're, you know, these are uh, guide tested and uh, wilderness approved boats that we're running at all our resorts. You know what's cool? I mean, these boats here, I mean, 
we fish tournaments and we, you know, you see all the big boats, the big Pro Vs and stuff like that, but you know what? There's so many camps in Canada, these outfitters and these outdoor camps and stuff in Northern Manitoba and all across Canada, they gotta be important to land boats. No, absolutely. You know what, this is the cool thing here. We're fishing at, uh, at Harrop Lake. Uh, we're in an SSV-16. And the amazing thing is, is um, the original S-16s that we built, you know, for, uh, for these camps, you know, for a rugged lake, that's gonna, we're gonna, they're gonna use them seven days a week. Uh, they're in circulation still. So right now we have an SSV-16 with an IPS hull. Plus there's, uh, as we're driving out today, we see a fleet of uh, S-16s going on as well. So that was pretty cool. And, you know, we spend a lot of time talking to um, the camp owners and resort owners uh, finding out what they what they're seeing different or what they'd like to see different in their product and taking that information and, and just putting out a really good quality product so they're happy their customers are happy and we're happy and uh, you know the cool thing is is another resort that a couple of resorts i know uh, the resort ran, ran that those boats for three years and those boats are going seven days a week you know from beginning of may right till october and they like to run fresh products so they go they order some new boats and what they're doing with those boats afterwards is they're selling them to another resort so that other resort's doing the same thing for two to three years, and you're gonna think sooner or later that boat's gonna get tired. But you know, the funny thing after that is, is that resort sold it to another resort. So what's happening is, is these camps are, are cycling through these boats and running them for nine, 10, 15, 20 years. And it, ju it just shows the longevity and, and the ruggability on, some, on, the, on these camp boats and, and land boats in general. Well, as you can see, we have some planes moving out here at Jackson's right now, but uh, we're gonna get picked up in about two hours. So what we're gonna do right now is uh, we're gonna see if we can fish a couple of points close to camp and see if we can uh, shake out a couple of bigger northern pikes out here. So uh, we gotta, we're all let, set up to go and um, yeah, we'll see what we can get here. But we're gonna try to turn and burn a couple of points here and uh, fish them quick. Over the years, we've been through uh, we've been through a lot of good fishing trips, and we've been to a lot of good places. And we've actually been on a lot of flyout camps, and uh, you know what? It's nice to think back, sit back, and think about all those trips. No, absolutely. You know what? The, the excitement and the adventure of going to a flyout resort is second to none. And uh, like you said, you hit the nail on the head. We've been doing this for you know a few trips already, and uh, just when, you always got to plan and get prepared to, to you know have a successful day on the water, but. Um, once you're out there, it's um, you know you're chasing fish, you're catching walleyes, you're catching pike, um, multi-species. But then we're also the advantages about coming out here is um, it's quiet, it's secluded. Uh, you're looking at waterfalls, you're seeing eagles, you're seeing bears. We even seen a couple of moose. And um, then afterwards, you know, if you want to do a shore lunch or just come back and fry fish, you know, at the camp, we have all those opportunities. So it's it, for for me, this is just uh, it's one of those trips of a lifetime for me to do stuff like this. Good friends, good times, good scenery, great camps, and uh, hey, who doesn't always love? a nice fish fry with fresh caught walleye. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.